Hello good people of YouTube, Mount Batten here, and today I'm bringing my second impressions video of the Tier 5 Premium British Heavy Cruiser, Exeter. So, what I said about Exeter in my first impressions video, if you guys remember at the end, it was hard to tell exactly how well the ship was because of all the lag, and I had a bit more lag this morning, but thankfully it managed to clear up and I managed to get quite a few decent games in, in the Exeter. So, she still feels good. The ship and the guns feel good. She's very nice and maneuverable. The guns are fairly accurate. And every now and then you'll get some really wonky dispersion. But that's like almost any ship. Especially at tier 5. <coughs> but the main downside of the Exeter is of course her armor. Her armor is pretty much non-existent. If any type of battleship shoots at you. You're going to take a fair amount of damage. Such is the life of any Brit British cruiser. However, other British cruisers have smoke screens to offset this. Exeter does not get that. However, she does get a heal at tier f tier five, but it's not really enough to um, bring you back from getting slapped by a battleship. I mean, anytime you get slapped by a battleship, you really shouldn't be able to come back from that. But it hurts a little bit more in Exeter because if there's not a destroyer that you're rolling with. You have to play an extreme game of cat and mouse using islands and using the ship's maneuverability and concealment to your benefit, which you can do. The ship is fairly stealthy and she's really fast for tier 5. You can dance your way out of most situations, but in some situations that you find yourself in, you just don't have a way out and you have to just go for it, which can be fun. And... That's where I'm finding fun in the Exeter when you, you you know that you can't really escape the situation. There's multiple cruisers around you and you can't smokescreen your way out of that situation. So you just have to go for it. And th those moments can be fun, especially when you're fighting cruisers. Um, and other cruisers, when you get to when you get to uh, within close range, your guns are really powerful. They You will be sitting the crap out of most other cruisers that you're around, especially when, you, when it's a tier 5 game. This, this game is, the ship is fantastic in a tier 5 match. I will give it that. It is wonderful in a tier 5 game. And it can it's still fairly good in a tier seven, uh, 6 game. Tier 7 is kind of where you're kind of boned, though. Uh, no smoke screen and... Uh, <laughs> The destroyer population now, either you're in a game where there's no destroyers, or you're in a game where there's freaking five of them on each team. It's it's an interesting situation. You definitely have to roll with a destroyer or another cruiser that has smoke, and if you do that, you know, the ship does well, but when you're off by your own, or you're not around anyone else who has smoke, uh, hmm, it's not that great. Now, of course, this is a ship you can potentially get for free by grinding the events. And, I mean, when you look at it like that as this potentially being a free premium, it's absolutely worth it. The guns are great. The ship is nice, fast, and maneuverable. Um, concealment is pretty good, is really good, too. And, of course, it's a premium tier 5. You know, you can grind a fair amount of credits with this ship. It's, you know, it, it's good for that. Um, the HD on the ship is also rather... Uh, good, you know, you can set fires fairly consistently on other battleships, although I don't use the HE too much, because most of the time when I'm playing Exeter, I'm, I'm hunting down other cruisers, especially Omaha's. Omaha's are just candy to this thing. Her torpedoes are also uh, really good too, although I haven't really, I haven't recorded myself doing good with, with the torpedoes, of, of course, you know. That's about how well this goes. Um, she can do the single drop torpedoes, and, you know, those are fun. And they are, they're not, well, not incredibly powerful when you do manage to land all three torpedoes, especially on a tier 5 battleship. You know, you can just farm damage all day with this thing. Um, but again, the, it's weird because either I have games where I do awesome in this ship because I'm with the DD and the DD's playing well with me and, you know, we're, we're supporting each other. Or you get the matches where your team just, you know, you get some of those teams where no one's really looking to play out, play, to, uh, play with their teammates and they're just trying to, you know, farm damage by themselves or whatever. This ship is heavily dependent upon, or first off, your skills as a cruiser player, which my skills as a cruiser player aren't all that fantastic, um, which is uh, undoubtedly some of the reason why I'm not doing fantastic in the Exeter. And your teammates. that You need team support with the ship. You need to roll with your team, and you'll do well. And uh, there's probably the first match you guys saw, I was out by myself, and the team was pushing the enemy cap. It was standard battle. 
And I'm just freaking, you know, kiting, you know, trying to draw the attention of that Sharn Horse away from my uh, teammate in the Atelier Revolution, just trying to defend the base for as long as I can before I go down. And I was also getting some extreme lag in that game, too, as you guys can see my um, ping in the upper left-hand corner going through the roof there. But it's not necessarily a bad ship, especially for a ship that you can get for free. Now, is should you buy it at the $35 bundle to get it right now? Absolutely not. It It's not worth $35, you know. If this comes up back up on the premium shop for, like, the normal cost of a tier 5 premium, uh, what are they, around 20 15 ish dollars, depending upon what country, country you're in? Yeah, I'd say it's probably worth that, but the bundle, nah, skip over the bundle, just grind it out and pick it up for free at the end of the, um at the end of the mission campaign, whatever that is. It's, again, it's not a bad ship. It's an extremely squishy ship. If you don't like squishy cruisers that you have to dance a lot in, this this is not the ship for you. Uh, this ship is not in my play style of ships. This is in more of the running and gunning style, so like the Kabarosk, the, uh, the Terrible, the, um... Oh, uh, what's the cruiser that's good at that? Oh, the French cruisers. If you like the French cruisers, you probably would like this thing. Uh, except she, she doesn't get the speed boost or the reload booster, but it's, a, it's that same type of you got a really fast cruiser, a really fast squishy cruiser, and you got some big guns on it, and you gotta run and kite and dance your little heart out. If you like that type of style of play, this is the ship for you. But if you like, you know, my type of style of play of getting in close and trading blows and you know trading shots left and right and secondaries flying off everywhere, this this is not the ship for you. I've tried to do that with this ship, and it can do it very briefly, very very briefly. It can do it, but it's just so squishy. Even with that hill, that hill isn't isn't enough to counteract the squishiness of the ship. Um, in my opinion, this really should have been maybe a tier six premium. With a slightly better heal and maybe a smoke screen, I understand that apparently it was extremely OP with the uh, smoke screen last time, but you could have just given a very short smoke screen, maybe 45 seconds, like the British destroyers, and that could have been a thing for the um, the British heavy cruiser line that's coming out. You know, the, the same short smoke smoke screen that the, that the destroyers get. Um, because in the smoke screen, this thing is quite good. Um, like I said, that's why you need to hang around through the destroyer buddies or your other um, Royal Navy <laughs> cruisers with smoke screens because you know you can do a, a lot of damage and put a lot of shells down range in this thing with a smoke screen um, but you know I get it and smoke screens are aggravating to deal with trust me as a <laughs> as a battleship man I understand the aggravation of ships hiding in smoke screens and spamming you with HG or AP yeah I know I know but I mean again it's kind of on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being like a Massachusetts and 1 being, uh, God, what's a premium I really don't like? Uh, 1 being what I thought of the Roma early on. Uh, this is probably around a 4 or a 5 for me. Um, and again, you know, I don't play a lot of cruisers. I really don't play the running gun style that this thing is. And it's good at that, you know, it's fast and it can dance fairly well. It's just that this just isn't my cup of tea. <laughs> I didn't even think tea. British people like tea. But again, not a bad ship. Not a terrible ship. Not a fantastic sh ship either, in my opinion. Um, I mean, pretty much, if this looks appealing to you, the gameplay um, on screen, if this looks appealing to you, yeah, go ahead and pick it up. Do, do the mission, or if, you, if you're fine with spending $35 on a tier 5 premium, you know, go for it. It's your money. You can do what you want with it. But, you know, my recommendation for you is if you're just a collector, you know, just earn it through the uh, missions. Free ship. If you are a diehard uh, Royal Navy fan and you really want to recreate the Battle of the River Plate, okay, buy it. You know, it's not a terrible investment, but again, it's, I don't think it's worth $35. Just grind out the missions, get it for free. That's my recommendation to you guys. So, guys, I hope you like this. Um, if you like the video, drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. We are on our way to 2,000 subscribers and we've recently passed 1,600 and we're still having a very fantastic period of growth and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Oh, also make sure you tune in for the makeup stream on, it will probably be this Wednesday or Thursday. I just gotta see when I got a free night. Uh, for those who don't know, the stream, we had problems with YouTube. Uh, on Friday night, and I don't know what was going on. It was like my streaming software didn't want to connect to YouTube, but my internet was fine. Everything else was working, but YouTube was just having a bad night. I don't know. 
So again, make sure you guys tune in for that. I will make another video or or oh, also join the Discord to where you can actually hear that announcement. Uh, on Discord, I announce all things about strings and videos and such on there. So, make, so join that to make sure you don't miss anything. The link is in the description down below. So again, guys, I thank you guys for watching. Hope you all are having a wonderful Monday. Hope to see all you guys in the next one.